Let's look at transistors. This is week six, chapter six. My name is Tom Lawrence from Columbia Gorge Community College. A transistor is made up of three doped regions, one N-doped, one P-doped, and one N-doped, all hooked together. This forms actually two diodes, one in this direction, and one in this direction with the uh, p-doped material in the center. The collector is medium doped. It's the largest of the three sections. It's called the collector because it collects most of the electrons from the base. The base is lightly doped and it's thin. The emitter is heavily doped. Now they make these in a PNP also configuration. In a circuit, a transistor can collect connected like this. We have a source on the base. We have a source on the base. And we have a source on the collector. So the collector is the positive end of it, and the emitter is the negative end of it. Uh, we have current limiting transistor or resistor RB and current limiting resistor RC. Now, when you bias this transistor in this fashion, you have two current loops in this. You have the current loop for the base and the current loop for the collector. Now, electrons come from the uh, negative terminal of the battery. They go through the emitter. If there is a bias on the base, they will go through the base. This forward biases the trend, the diode here that we talked about. It forward biases that diode. It changes the depletion region here. It actually reverse biases this one. And this depletion region gets larger. The depletion regions get closer together. When the electrons enter the emitter, they enter this, this region here, and they're, since it's so thin, their lifetime is longer, and they actually have enough energy to get all the way across this barrier into the collector. If you don't forward bias this, then this doesn't happen. You have a back-to-back uh, -back diodes that... Um, You get no current flow, nothing at all. Um, so anyhow, we have these two current loops. We have this one and this one. And we need to look at this as a circuit. How's this? The symbol for a transistor, for an NPN transistor, is... Uh, this right here, the arrow pointing towards the direction of current flow. Um, you'll notice that a this is an NPN, a PNP. This arrow points the other way, so the current flow paths are through the base this way, and from emitter to collector this way. Now, I hate to, uh, to mix conventional current and electron flow, but that's the nature of this course because we deal with this in conventional current. The only thing that makes it easy is the fact that these arrows point in the direction of conventional current, and we can think of it that way. A symbol for a transistor often has this circle around it. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Depends on the manufacturer of the data sheet. Uh, we need to talk about collector current and base current and their relationships. Um, IC is the collector current. That's this current here. Base current goes from base to emitter. This is on an N 
NPN. We're going to deal mostly with NPN transistors until we get used to them. Uh, we have emitter current IE. So we have IC, IB, and IE. Collector or emitter current is collector current plus base current. As you can see, they join together. Uh, collector current would be emitter current minus the base current. Um, and just rearranging all this stuff. Base current is IE minus IC. Um, we need to come up, we need to talk about something called beta DC. Beta DC is a relationship of collector current versus base current. Uh, and keep in mind that the base current is what controls the collector current. If we have a beta of 150, current gain is 150. We have a current gain of 150 in this device. That means if we have 1 milliamp in the base, we have 150 milliamps in the collector. Let's see. If we have uh, something about these relationships here, if we have a beta DC of 150, that means IB is really small, so IC plus IB equals IE, but if IB is so small, then uh, IC is approximately equal to IE. Uh, we also have another relationship. This thing is called alpha DC. Um, it's the relationship of collector current to emitter current. If beta DC is 150, then this is 0.999. Um, It'll, it'll never be 1. It'll, it'll approach 1, but it'll never be 1 because of the base current. Um, the only time we really have to worry about base current uh, through maybe a third approximation, and we'll never quite get to a third approximation because we have to deal with temperature and all that. Um, beta DC, if beta DC is 30, then alpha DC is important because uh, a beta DC of 30 would be 1 over 30. And no, it wouldn't. Um, if a beta DC is 30, then the uh, base current is a pretty high rep part of the emitter current, and we have to keep it in mind. Um, 